Hello, it's Craig here with the most in-depth breakdown for light bows, bows, and great bows. If you want to be an archer, this video will be your best friend. An annoying aspect of these weapons is the ammunition they consume, but I believe they are plenty usable and it's actually quite interesting to dissect. To begin understanding bows, first we must take a look at arrows because this is an integral part of your kit. The way bows and arrows work is actually quite simple. First, add your bow AR and status to your arrow's AR and status effect. Split damage also applies here, so despite having more total AR, the split damage arrows very often deal less damage than just pure physical ones. Shots made other than from the Ashes of War all deal 100% of your bow plus arrow AR. Headshots deal 50% more damage as a multiplier. There are often flesh versus unfleshed versions of arrows. The unfleshed version have a penalty to their effective range. I say this instead of the fleshed having a bonus to its effective range, because the fleshed version has the same effective range as normal arrows that don't have an unfleshed version. I will explain effective range in a second, but if you find yourself fighting mostly at a close to mid range and already run the arrows reach talisman, you can save yourself some flight pinions by using the unfleshed version. For the discussion, I will only be showing the flesh versions, as the two versions have no other differences other than the effective range and cost of crafting. Shatter Shard Arrow and Rainbow Stone Arrow are more for their unique effects that comes in the form of utility. The Shatter Shard Arrow attracts enemies in PvE, while the Rainbow Stone Arrow leaves behind a Rainbow Stone. In terms of actual damage, they fall short. The Bone Arrow and Arrow are both much easier to obtain in larger quantities than the Stormwing Arrow, but if you're playing on PC or is not worried about obtaining this rare arrow, the Stormwing Bone Arrow is without the doubt the best pure physical arrow. These arrows also have the added bonus of having longer effective range, and deals 50 poise damage in PvP or 5 poise damage in PvE, versus the other arrows that deal 20 poise damage in PvP or 2 poise damage in PvE. Next, the split damage arrows are actually all fairly weak, due to how split damage works. For some reason, the Lightning Arrow is missing a purchasable option, and purchasable options are slightly stronger than the craftable ones. Yet, the Lightning Arrows will tend to deal the most damage on players, due to players having innately lower Lightning defense. However, even the Lightning Arrows still deal quite poor damage despite having roughly twice the AR of Stormwing Arrows, since you must add the Arrow AR to the Bow AR. Here, I'm shooting a 4 bull Golds player with a fleshed Lightning Arrow, which deals the highest damage in PvP. Yes, in terms of elemental negation, the bull Golds does have higher Lightning negation, but one of the most popular sets, Veteran's Set, has low Lightning negation instead. Obviously, individual negation might be slightly different, but the results will still be largely similar. The Stormwing Bone Arrow typically deals more damage. Furthermore, since arrows deal piercing damage, if we do land a counter hit, the Stormwing Arrow will get a larger bonus. Since these elemental arrows don't deal extra poise damage or have a further effective range, they're actually all fairly bad except against PvE enemies that are specifically weak to an element. Finally, we have the status arrows. The sleeve status arrows in particular have a very high status buildup, making these arrows undoubtedly the strongest tools in PvP. In fact, they are quite powerful because you can sleep most players in 3 or 4 shots, allowing you to combo into something else, or a guaranteed headshot. They are incredibly annoying, especially with light rolls or latency. For a bit less total AR, you're getting a huge chunk of status effect, so these are certainly worth the trade-off. This is a table I've made for the arrows. I labeled it for PvP because I'm not considering the cost of obtaining these arrows. Some of the best options are often a pain to obtain. For the Lightning Bone Arrow, I would still consider them for invasions in wet areas, because they create AoEs in water, but otherwise, it also falls into the split damage problem, where Stormwing is just better. The other status arrows are not as dominant as the Sleep Arrows, and require many more shots. Combined with Status Decay, they are much harder to apply and can more easily be bolused. Okay. So I've mentioned effective range a few times already. What exactly is effective range? As far as I know, these are the only 4 items that increase effective range of your arrows, or is an arrow that has a longer effective range. Furthermore, unlike the other 3, the pulley bow only slightly increases effective range, 
so it isn't nearly as effective. The description of Arrow's Reach Talisman actually gives us a hint, even though it isn't very clear about it. Arrows shot out actually have a parameter called lifetime, which makes arrows expire upon a certain number of seconds if they do not hit any target. What effective range does is it makes your arrow fly further in a straight line before it starts its parabolic curve downwards. So effective range doesn't directly increase range, but instead increases your reach by letting the arrows fly straighter. I know it can be kind of hard to picture or even follow the arrows on the screen, so I suggest shooting some arrows yourself. Furthermore, the longer the effective range is, the further the arrow flies before damage drop off happens. Increasing an arrow's effective range can therefore increase its damage dealt. This is why arrows reach talisman is often recommended in PvE, as sniping enemies from afar usually greatly decreases your damage due to damage fall off from not having enough effective range. With effective range out of the way, let us start off with the basic bows, which include the longbow, albinoric bow, horn bow, pulley bow, serpent bow, and archery bow. Bows cannot be infused with affinities, but some of them can be infused with other ashes of war. On this list, the last three bows cannot be infused with other ashes of war. Now, my bow aficionados are going to call me out for missing the seventh bow, the black bow. But the thing is, the black bow's unique trait pretty much turns it into a light bow, as it has the moveset of the light bow rather than the regular bows. I will discuss this more in detail soon. Furthermore, it also has the weapon art, Barrage, which can only be infused on light bows, so the black bow will be discussed in the light bow section. Talking about weapon art, let's briefly cover the Ashes of War bows can use. Mighty Shot shoots a stronger shot. Through and through shoots a piercing shot. Enchanted Shot shoots an arrow that has a bit of tracking ability which helps you with hitting moving targets. Sky Shot shoots an arrow that falls down after a while. Rain of arrow rains down arrows. Thank you very much. I know that was very descriptive. Barrage allows you to quickly fire off one arrow after another in a barrage. Barrage consumes a lot of arrows, and each individual arrow also deals less damage, status damage, and poise damage. As aforementioned, this Ash of War is only available for light bows. For duels in particular, you'll usually be choosing Barrage as this is an option you can use quickly, especially defensively. The other Ashes of War are more PvE or invasion oriented. As for the bows, it is also worth mentioning that the Poly Bow slightly increases the effective range of your arrow shot, while the Serpent Bow is the only bow with base status effect and arcane scaling. Since the way bow AR is calculated is by adding the arrow AR to your bow AR, having base status effect on the bow basically means all your arrows will do additional poison buildup, which you can stack with poison arrows. Because the way this bow applies poison buildup is not through a passive, but rather through bow and arrow damage calculation, you cannot hold this bow while two-handing another bow for free poison buildup, as it is not really a passive. The arcane scaling of this bow also scales the status application on the arrows, as long as the status effect scales to arcane. One other thing I will mention right now is the horn bow does not give any damage bonus to dwelling arrows. What the person who wrote this experienced is a better distribution of AR for split scaling. Because the horn bow also has magic damage, it pushed the split scaling to a more favorable number for both physical and magic. Let me give an example. A regular bow shooting a dwelling arrow might have something like 305 physical AR plus 95 magic AR, while the horn bow might have something like 250 physical plus 150 magic. While the two instances have the same total AR, 
defense calculation is applied separately, and in this case favors the 250 plus 150, as it usually will, since 95 magic damage is quite low, and will suffer from the defense curve of low damage. Let's start with strength investment for bows. All AR done in this video will be two-handed, because bows can only be fired two-handed. The requirements of some other stats aren't met, but it won't negatively impact the AR. You simply have to meet the stat requirements. It is quite evident that the pulley bow wins as a non-split scaling bow, as after looking at the arrows, you should have a sense that we generally don't want split scaling for bows. To secure the deal, remember, the pulley bow has the increased effective range. The only downside is you cannot infuse it with another Ash of War, so you're stuck with Mighty Shot. If you want an infusible one on strength, Longbow is the better option with less dexterity requirement. Remember that both the Hornbow and the Erdtree Bow are split scaling, so their AR are inflated. Better yet, invest in a quality spread if you're only going for bow maximization, which pretty much improves bow AR across the board at lower investment levels by tapping into more of the lower stat curve. This is for AD strength. Bows are more of a dexterity weapon in general, so even with the 1.5 times strength bonus, we see here that all but the pulley bow has some degree of increase in AR versus the strength investment. The albinoric bow has the most non-split scaling AR and is also infusible. For raw AR, this also holds true at 80 dexterity. Because the horn bow's dex scaling is better than its intelligence scaling, this is actually not an intelligence weapon, even though it is the only bow that scales to intelligence. I suggest sticking to glintstone staffs on intelligence builds. The Urtree bow not only has higher holy attack, but also faith scaling. But don't be too happy. Just take a look at its comparative AR versus the horn bow, while both are split scaled. The Urtree bow was simply crappier originally. Even if it scales better, it only makes it slightly better than the horn bow, which is not that great. I really recommend strength or dexterity or both if you want to use bows. Finally, arcane. The arcane investment for Serpent Bow doesn't actually increase the Serpent Bow's AR. Unlike on other weapons, it only scales the status effect of the bows and arrows. Arcane scales the buildup of the following arrows, as it doesn't affect Frostbite and Scarlet Rod buildup for the other status arrows. Here are some reference numbers for base arcane versus with investment. The number under the arcane is the poison buildup of the Serpent Bow itself. At higher investment levels, where you can invest into both Dexterity and Arcane, this becomes very powerful for status arrows, as it gains a lot of status buildup by trading only a bit of AR. And with that, I think it is time to discuss the Light Bow moveset before we talk about Light Bows. What exactly is the advantage of Light Bows? Light Bows gain access to a lot more moves compared to Bows. Many of them, such as Running Shot and Landing Shot, works a lot better for PvP. It also allows the archer to attack with more variety and on the move. This is why the light bow moveset is much more favorable than the regular bow moveset for PvP. For the light bows, we have the short bow, red branch short bow, composite bow, misbegotten short bow, harp bow, and black bow, which do keep in mind is actually a bow with a light bow moveset. But honestly, it might as well be a light bow. The harp bow and black bow cannot be infused with other weapon arts. But at least the Black Bow, the best PvP option, comes with the Barrage skill, which is good for PvP. Instead of having a positive bonus, the Misbegotten Short Bow has a negative bonus with a decreased effective range. Starting with Bows on Strength Build, if you ignore the fact that it cannot be infused and requires high dexterity, the Black Bow easily wins. Otherwise, you will have to settle for the Misbegotten or the Composite Bow if you don't want the range drop off. Once again, light bows mostly have a good enough dexterity scaling, where going for a quality spread will indeed increase their damage if bow maximization is your main concern, rather than using bows as an additional tool to your build. These are their stats at 80 strength. Since most light bows scale better to dexterity, it is no surprise that most of them have higher AR here versus the strength investment. Black bow wins comfortably if you're going to settle with barrage and Composite Bow takes second without any issues for any other Ashes of War. As there are no Light Bows that scale to other stats, let us compare the Dex build with the quality one for one last look. Honestly, Black Bow's performance is about the same on any of the builds with a slight difference only. 
this is definitely the best light bow if you're fine with barrage. Finally, let's take a look at great bows. But before we cover great bows, we have to cover the ammo first, the great arrows. There are far fewer great arrows, and there are no great arrows that apply status effects. If we ignore the cost of obtaining them, we're left with these options. Unfortunately, for any great bow enjoyers, the Golem's Great Arrow, which is undoubtedly the strongest great arrow with its unique wind AoE, is a pain to farm. This is super powerful in PvP, as I've demonstrated in the Lion's Small build. You can make your opponents dance in the palm of your hand with great bows when you master how to use these arrows. I encourage people who want to try something new to have a look. Back on topic, Golden Great Arrow is still on the list, only because it applies the Ash of War version of Golden Bow to an area near its impact. This is quite good for PvE, but for PvP, it suffers from having a PvP modifier, just like the Ash of War Golden Bow. Someone mentioned that the Golden Bow applied by this arrow doesn't have a PvP modifier, unlike the Ash of War version, which is wrong. As you can see here, the damage is only increased by 2.5% as I shoot this player instead of 7.5%. There is indeed a PvP modifier. And here is the table for Great Arrows. Rodan's Spear flies faster than other Great Arrows, and can also be buffed by the Lion Great Bow. Since this is a passive of the Great Bow, Rather than having to shoot the spear with the Lion Great Bow, you can indeed hold the Lion Great Bow on your other hand and still get the bonus. You can even hold two Lion Great Bows and get the bonus twice. As for the Golem's Great Arrow, aside from doing a Wind AoE, it also has a longer effective range and deals 100 points damage for PvP or 10 points damage for PvE instead of 70 points damage for PvP or 7 points damage for PvE like the other Great Arrows. This great arrow is seriously loaded, but good luck to anyone not on PC trying to farm this. I guess at least you can watch me PvP with this great arrow. <laughs> now, great bows. There are only 4 of them, so this is relatively easy to cover. Like bows and light bows, they can only fire two-handed. The only infusible great bow is the great bow, and the only ash of war you can infuse it with is the rain of arrows. The Lion Great Bow actually has a unique weapon art, Radon's Ring, which is a longer lasting rain of arrow that deals more total damage and has a longer cast time. For strength investment, I listed them from light to heavy, except the Earth Tree Great Bow, which I placed last because this is the only Great Bow that scales to a non strength or dexterity stat and is split scaled. We will talk about this separately. For strength, Golem Great Bow leads by a mile, even with the weight factored in. The Great Bow is the only Great Bow that scales equally well to Strength and Dexterity. Every other Great Bow scales better to Strength, so quality doesn't help Great Bows much unlike Bows or Light Bows. These are their AR at 80 Strength. Two-handing your weapon makes your effective Strength 50% higher, and yes, it does extend past 99 Strength. For Dexterity builds, you can still use Great Bows as an utility option, but it is definitely weaker than on a Strength build especially because the best Great Bow, Golem's Great Bow, scales a lot harder to strength. The Great Bow or Lion Great Bow can also serve as a lighter weapon option, because unlike for strength, their scaling for dexterity is actually higher than the Golem Great Bow. Now is the perfect time to talk about Earth Tree Great Bow, which, as we see here, scales best to Faith. The thing is, even if we're on Faith investment, the Golem still actually has more AR at the 50 Faith mark even though the Earth Tree Great Bow is split scaled. But as previously explained, this Great Bow has a slight advantage when it comes to defense calculation, just like the Horn Bow, when working with an arrow that uses the same split. So, if I fire off the Golden Great Arrow when it has the same AR as the Golem Great Bow, it will do better. But even at the 80 Faith Mark, it won't match the Golem's AR, and the Golden Great Bow has lower AR than the Magic version. The arrow's main utility is applying Golden Vow. Furthermore, the Great Bow is split damage, so it even loses out on damage versus the Lion Great Bow or the Great Bow on a Faith build, while firing Great Arrows that are not Golden Great Arrow. So yeah, a trash Great Bow. Now, the other question you must be wondering about is the Lion's Great Bow plus the Radon's Spear. Let's take a look at them at both the 54 strength and 80 strength mark by adding the Arrow AR to the Bow AR. Then, we give the Lion Great Bow a 1.2 times multiplier which will mean that its arrow damage will about match the Golem Great Bows. 
However, this is a multiplier done after defense calculation, so in actuality, defense will push the damage on golem scrape bow to be slightly higher than the rotons if we're only using a single bow. The bigger upside for lion grape bow is that it is 5 weights lighter. Or you can do what I did in my pure grape bow build and take advantage of both bows together to have the best damage available for both great arrows. I'll do a summary for the breakdown as per usual, but I strongly encourage looking through the entire video or going back to the specific sections for your weapon choice, as there is quite a bit of nuance to bows, despite not having the ability to take on different affinities. As there are too many bows and arrows, anything not mentioned in the summary is eliminated or doesn't stand out. Starting with the arrows, Stormwing is undoubtedly the best non-status arrow. Trinus is particularly potent for PvP. Go back and look at the detailed discussion if you don't understand this chart. For the bows, these are undoubtedly more PvE picks because light bows have the superior PvP moveset, so these are what you would use depending on the build. The pulley bow has great stats on a strength or quality build, and also the extended effective range. However, you're locked into Mighty Shot. If you want another weapon art for the same strength or quality build, use the long bow instead. If you're on a dex build, use the albinaric bow. These three weapons are great options for shooting any of the non-status arrows or status arrows that don't scale to arcane. Otherwise, Serpent Bow is your go-to. The Horn Bow and the Erdry Bow are really more of a gimmick, rather than something effective. They can show a slight increase in usability by firing arrows with the same elemental damage type when you happen to invest into Intelligence or Faith. But if bows are your main weapon, I don't recommend either of these. For the Light Bows, these are the only notable ones with Black Bow easily having the highest AR. Yes, I know this is a bow, but it has the full moveset of the Light Bow and is locked into the Barrage Ash of War, which can only be infused on Light Bows. You would take the Composite Bow for any other weapon art, or the Misbegotten specifically only on Strength builds and don't mind the lower effective range. Overall, the Black Bow is your best PvP option for bows and Light Bows, as it has the stats of a bow with the moveset of a Light Bow. For the Great Arrows, this is the summary chart. The Golem's Great Arrow, although a pain to obtain, is super powerful with its longer range, AoE on impact, and highest physical AR. The Rodon Spear do fly faster and can be buffed by the Lion Great Bow, which can be great in the right build. As for the Golden Great Arrow, it is usable for PvE as a Golden Vow buff, but the Golden Vow does indeed suffer from a PvP modifier. As for the Great Bows, the Lion Great Bow gives the Rodon Spear a 20% damage bonus as a passive and has a unique weapon art. The Great Bow has very similar stats to the Lion Great Bow on any build, so you're going to be using this because you want a different Ash of War or won't be firing any Rodon Spears. Of course, if you can afford the stats, the Golem Great Bow is by far the best Great Bow even with the Rodon Spear considered. And the Urtree Great Bow is plain bad and will only slightly outperform the non-golem bow on a full faith investment while specifically firing the golden great arrow at an enemy. Like and subscribe. These detailed videos take a long time to make, so if you want to support my channel, you can buy my fantasy novel, which will also allow you to request a topic from me. Krite, signing out.